Am I weird if I play games as the opposite gender? Let's find out. So this weekend, I finally sat down and played GTA Online. Like many online games, I had to make my own character. So I chose my grandparents, tweaked my facial hair, and pruned my personality. But I have a confession. Whenever I play an RPG, or any game that lets me make my own character, I always play as some image of myself. Maybe it's because most games don't have someone who looks like me. But when I get a choice, I always play a guy. So that got me thinking, why is that? Lord knows I'm not scared of playing as a woman, and in most games, the difference doesn't really matter. Many of the best Marvel vs. Capcom players play as Akuma and as Storm, but there are many of you that do swap genders. Mike over at Idea Channel says that sometimes he uses female characters just to experiment with being someone else. So, to Mike and everyone else out there, if you're a guy and you like playing as a female elf, or if you're a woman and you give your characters mustaches, why swap genders? Or, in my case, why not? So first of all, there's a very simple reason why we might play for the other team. We want to win. Winning. Did you ever pick Chun-Li for her combos, or maybe Garen for his brawn? I'm holding the world up. Whatever stigma or personal embarrassment you might have faced at the arcade was overridden by your simple desire to win. Gender be damned. After studying EverQuest, social scientist Nicholas Yee discovered the competitive side of gender bending. Some male players played as a woman, simply because other players were more willing to help female avatars. As one player put it, people in EverQuest are just nicer to a cute, dark elf girl. You know, just like in real life. But some players viewed the sexism that manifested itself in the game as an advantage. That means choosing a woman for the simple reason that other players aren't expecting you to be as aggressive or, well, any good. This is, of course, ridiculous. We shouldn't assume anything about the abilities of an avatar based on their gender expression. I would jump in front of a train for you. <laughs> would you? <laughs> I would take a bullet for you. <laughs> But ironically, some women exploit the same process. One woman told Yi that when she plays as a male character, her teammates listen to her and take her more seriously. In this case, women are just working the opposite end of the very same imbalance. But pragmatism aside, maybe there are deeper reasons why we change our gender in games. Let's look at why people play games in the first place. There are lots of reasons, but two big ones are a sense of achievement, which we covered, and another is experience. If you're someone who wants to win, then your gender expression is just another tool to help you get ahead. But if you play games for the experience, or to socialize or connect with others, then things get a little bit more complicated. Who you pick is not just about winning, it's about asserting your identity, which gets particularly confusing when we're talking about gender. And that brings me, of course, to David Bowie. Bowie approached gender as a fluid, changeable thing. Bowie jumped from Ziggy Stardust to Diamond Dogs to Ashes to Ashes, and he understood that gender is complicated. You have your sex, which is what your biology is. Then there's your gender identity, which is what you perceive yourself as. And there's gender expression, which is how you communicate that outwardly. And on top of all that, there's your orientation, which is who you're sexually attracted to. And all of those don't have to agree. In fact, academics have a word for this, gender diversity. This just means that gender exists on a spectrum, and some people's preferences and self-expression exists outside of the strict male-female binary. And this view isn't just limited to the ivory tower. The Hijra of India represent a world with three genders. The Navajo have four, and not to be outdone, the Bugi people of modern Indonesia believe there are five. In Western culture, we often don't encourage this type of thinking or expression. And for most of us, we can't exactly show up for work looking like Ziggy Stardust. Experimentation, particularly with gender, comes with a real social cost. Games, on the other hand, are safe spaces to try out new identities. Where else can you be a man playing a female character who flirts with other men played by women, or possibly other men? Sherry Turkle, a longtime observer of the internet and a researcher at MIT, says that the internet allows us to try on new forms. She's saying that online, we can construct as many identities as we like because we have a measure of anonymity. And doesn't the same thing apply for games? Whether it's single player or multiplayer, we game with relative privacy, which frees us up to play with our identity. Okay, maybe for some of you, this gender expression stuff isn't quite so deep. You may not be interested in experimenting with your gender in real life and are just looking for something different online. Who worried better? 
And of course, not all games allow you to customize your character to pick who you like. But if you're a man playing as Faith or a woman playing as Gordon Freeman, your experience is going to be different. And by forcing us to play someone we're not, games like Anna Anthropy's Dysphoria challenge our own expectations around gender. And this is probably a good thing. Players who tried out a different gender reported a new understanding of how gender functions and an increased empathy for the other sex. So is it weird if you're a guy who plays as a girl or vice versa? No. The reality is I can create a character who looks and acts like me or someone entirely different. But in the end, neither version is really me. Mike over at Idea Channel has a lot to say about this and you should definitely go check out his new video. Games allow us to be our true selves or someone else entirely without the risk or judgment from the real world. So go ahead, try a different gender and see what it's like. It's totally okay if you like it. So what do you think about gender swapping in games? And if you do it, please tell us why. Hash it out in the comments and I will see you next week. In our last episode, we talked about permadeath. Let's see what you have to say. Kogo0847 mentions Ernest Becker's work, The Denial of Death. I hadn't heard of it, but it's an awesome suggestion. I'll check it out. I'm sorry, Angus. Nothing's worse than losing your diamond horse armor in the nether in lava. I want to tell you it gets better, but it doesn't. Ray Ayanami 8 points out that it's not actually you that dies in games, which is a good thing. Well, that doesn't mean the experiences that we have or the feelings evoked from games aren't real. So if I beat my friend in Madden, those feelings of victory and crushing him, um, those are totally, totally real. So we should still enjoy those. Andrew Heston points out that people in DayZ are still jerks, even though permadeath is a very big feature. Um, well, we were talking more about what happens outside of the game, not necessarily how people behave in the game. So yeah, I'm sorry, DayZ people are still Still not very nice. SP3 asks whether or not we get paid to mention certain games in our videos, and the answer is no. Uh, we try to pick things that are timely, so Beyond Two Souls we mentioned because it was coming out around the same time as the video. But thanks so much for the comment. Polnadian and others say that I meant to say Dean Hall instead of Tom Hall. I'm really sorry about that. It's a good catch. FD Who Are mentions the Nuzlocke run in Pokemon, where you abide by a certain set of conditions to recreate the experience of permadeath. That's a great point. Not all games have permadeath, but we can institute our own version of it by adding new rules. There's actually a really good description of someone who did that for Far Cry 2. Um, we'll link to it in the description, but you should check it out. And according to Johannes here, I look like Swedish comedian David Batra, who I had never heard of before. So thank you for that. I will add him to the list.